Well, what's up, America? This is old Jim Bob from Jim Bob's Commentary Channel coming to you from his newest secret location somewhere in America. Where you been out there, people? I'm uh, sorry I ain't been talking to you. I know you've been missing me. Well, I thought I'd give you a little chit-chat today. Well, I've been thinking about uh, the gadgets on cars. I heard on uh, NPR radio the other day uh, about uh, the most uh, important thing to car buyers these days is not safety or how fast a car goes or anything. It's the gadgets in the car. And uh, so, you know, I bought me a new car back in 2012. It's still new to me now. And uh, it's got a lot of gadgets in it. It had a thing where you could put the MP3 music on it and uh, listen to your own kind of songs and stuff. So I like that. I, I got the Eagles on there and Bob Seger. That old song, Against the Wind. Uh, I like that song. It's about me and my first wife. Yeah, well, anyhow, uh, uh, I like that part of Gadget, and there's so many gadgets on there, I didn't even know I had a lot of them. And uh, so uh, one of them I found out about I didn't like very much. Uh, the damn uh, congressman up there they passed the stupidest laws in the world I ever did hear of, and uh, that's how this uh, gadget got on a car. It's a thing that tells you where you got R in your tires. I mean, good God, you can't tell if you got a flat tire anymore or anything. Uh, a car has to tell you what it is. It's got uh, four little sensor things in each tire, and, uh, and they talk to each other by radio frequency uh, and tell each tire whether it uh, goes back to the master controller computer thing in the car, and it says, uh, yeah, I've got iron in the tires. And uh, so you're driving down the road and the first right-hand uh, front tire says to the uh, left-hand front tire, you got air in you? And he said, yeah, I do. He said, well, call on the back tire. He said, he called on the back left tire. He said, back left tire, you got air in you? He said, yeah, I do. And he, he said, well, call on the right rear tire. And he said, okay. He called on the right rear tire. The right rear tire says, uh, I got air in me. And then he says, okay, call on up into the master controller and tell the master controller everybody's got air in him. He said, okay. And so he called up the master controller, everybody's got air in him. He said, okay. And you keep on driving down the road, well, nothing happens. I see, he's just in there talking to each other. The whole time you're driving down the road, these little four little things are jibber jabber back and forth at each other. And then, uh, then uh, what happens? Well, it gets cold. And uh, you get a big cold snap come on. And... Uh, all of a sudden, your tires contract. And then, it, uh, while you riding down the road, and the little uh, guys are talking to each other back there, and one of them said, no, I ain't got enough air in me, and he said, boom, it flies on the light. He said, put some air in your tires. You got to put some air in your tires. It shuts everything else off till you go get some air in your tires. Well, guess what? There ain't no air in your tires. They got nitrogen in your tires now. There ain't no air in them. You can't go down there and pump up the free air no more. And air ain't even free. It costs you 25 cents. But anyways, you can't go get no 25 cent air. No, you got to go to find somebody at a tire place and uh, see if they got the nitrogen. And so I went, now that what happened to me just recently. It got cold. See, I got a jacket on. And so... Uh, I went on up uh, to the tar place, the closest one to me, and a, a feller was standing around outside. He's an older fella like me. And I said, hey, you got any nitrogen in here? And he said, what? Nitrogen? What are you talking about? I said, I have nitrogen to put in your tars. He said, no, I ain't got none of that stuff here. I said, you know where you can, I can get some? He said, no, I don't. So I went on to another tar place. Went in there. They said, yeah, we got some nitrogen in here. Uh, it cost you ten dollars. I said, "What? Ten dollars for nitrogen?" Yeah, that's what it costs to tap it off, cause we got to check all the sensors, and then uh, that's a bunch of crap. So I paid my ten dollars to have my nitrogen put in there, and uh, so I don't like that gadget. And uh, then another thing happened: one of the caps broke off, and uh, on the on the t air tire thing. And so I went to get that fixed, and dadgummit, you know what? how much money they wanted for that? 
They wanted thirty nine dollars and ninety five cents for just one of them little old talky things in there. I said, "The hell with that! I just let it get out of here. I don't care." And uh, so now I don't like that thing. So anyway, the other night, uh, I was uh, in my other secret location, and uh, things got a little uh, hot around there. With some arguing and this kind of stuff, you know. Things like that happen sometimes. And I figure, well, I need to leave and get on out of here because uh, things are getting bad. I don't want them to be no worse. I, I love the person who's there very much, and and uh, and I'm sorry it all happened. So anyways, I, I, uh, it was about 1 o'clock in the morning, and so I figured I'd just uh, drive on down to the uh, boat ramp at the river and uh, just spend the night in the car down there. And then the next day, I'd get me a, a place to stay. So well, I went down there, and, and uh, I was uh, sitting by the river. It was full moon, man. It was nice out there. A little bit cold, but it wasn't too bad. And uh, I was sitting there. I turned the car off and uh, took my keys out and locked the doors. So, uh, and uh, I was just sitting there, and leaning my seat back. Oh, I was really comfortable and everything. And uh, I kept looking up on the dash, and the red light flashing, on and off, on and off, on and off. Well, I was trying to go to sleep, and I kept thinking about that dead red light flashing, on and off, on and off, on and off. I couldn't go to sleep. So I got up, and I would put the keys in my pocket in case I'd fall asleep, and I didn't want to... Uh, get up, you know, sleep a days and go out and lock myself out of the car or something like that. I'd done that. So, anyways, I, I had heard from my girlfriend that you can uh, uh, hook your telephone, your cell phone up on your car and uh, talk to that while you're driving down the road. And I thought, well, I'll just try to do that. And then, uh, so I put the key in the ignition and turned the car on and uh, got the papers out of the glove box and started reading them and I just set that thing up and uh, sure enough it come on and uh, I got it all set up and everything and uh, and I pushed the button and uh, a, a girl come on there and talked and said what you want me to do? I said I'll be there and go and I said I saw I'd give her a telephone number to call her and she said I can't call it it ain't in your contacts and so anyways I said, well, hell with that. I'll just fool with that later. But anyway, that was kind of cool. And uh, so I shut the car off. And uh, and and, uh, and I left the key in the ignition. And uh, I closed my eyes and I was thinking, oh, that light ain't flashing no more. I look at that, that light stopped flashing. I opened my eyes back up, and sure enough, the red light wasn't flashing no more. So then it come to it dawned on me, well I know what's going on now. Some dead gum congressman passed a law, said they've had to put the red light in there and all that stuff, so that it helped the uh, car thieves said no, when they walk down the road they'd be able to see if it, if it didn't have a red light flashing to go ahead, that's the one to steal it had the keys in the lending issue, see? We were helping out the burglars that way. So the, I guess the burglars have been lobbying Congress. I mean, the burglars, some of them got a lot of money. I don't know. But anyways, uh, that's uh, that's what happened on that deal. That, that, that kind of a gadget, isn't that something? Uh, I really did uh, uh, laugh about that after a while. Well, I think that's all for today, folks. Uh, Jim Bob's a little bit tired. It's way past his bedtime. So Jim Bob is going to be out here in a minute if I can find a thing to make me out.